Hi, I'm Hayley Pittam and today I am interviewing not Linda, even though she's with me, I'm actually interviewing Aquasphere and Aquasphere is an aqua um, company that deals with equipment from swimming um, floats, noodles, goggles, wetsuits, swimming costumes, all the, all, all the different bits to do with being in the swimming pool. They do everything. And what I did was I reached out to them to ask if a designer could be interviewed. And what they gave me was the interviewer's answers. So Linda is stepping in and Linda is going to be um, representing Aquasphere and answering these questions. Before, in English, not Italian. In English and not Italian, because the designer is Italian. And um, before we begin, I just thought I'd grab my Aquasphere bag that I've got full of kit and show you some of the bits and pieces that they do for aqua aerobics. So first of all, opening up my bag, I have a pair of mitts. So I've got the Aquasphere mitts that they um, sell. I have the Aquasphere belt that they that they have for the deep water fitness in my bag i have the dumbbells um, they're nice and smooth through the different planes i call these the dog bone ones and then they also have the ergo bells and the ergo bells look a little bit more like a fish just like linda's got there they're either looking like a sweet or a fish yeah so you can use them that way you can use them that way, you can use them that way. They're very comfortable on the hand. Yeah. So these, these are good. Yeah. Then I have the feet floats. Now the feet floats are not the sexiest piece of item to wear, but they are very effective and they go on like a sandal and then you've got flotation factors on the feet. I think they've stopped producing that one though. Also in my bag I have paddles and these are air pockets. Can you see the, the bobbly bits? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are like air pockets and um, this is more like a power mitt. Like if someone's really really strong, heavy duty, wanting to work really really hard, they've got a bigger surface area uh, a larger hand span to be able to push and also the extra buoyancy to create some challenge. I've also got a fins in my bag. Obviously not something that we regularly use in um, in aqua aerobics. But oh, um, the shape of water. <laughs> these are, yeah, and these are the most bizarrest shape fins I've ever owned in my entire life, but very effective. Um, I then have the good old fashioned swimming hand paddles. These hand paddles, again, large surface area, really good resistance, incredibly resistance on the drag front. I also have two floats. So I have a, what I call like a spaceship looking float, which just has the handlebars at the top. And then I also have a float that has a larger um, holes for holding. And again, can be used to pull or twist or drag whilst teaching aqua aerobics. And then the last one that we've got is Linda's one, which is a cross between a float and a kick, uh, a pool, pool boy. boy. Yeah. <laughs> no. So you can put it between the legs or you can use it, you know, to hold. Yeah. Normal float. And hold like a float normally, yeah. So there we go. I can't believe I got pool boy wrong nearly there. But yeah, putting it between your legs, um, on that one is going to be far easier than doing it with this one so yeah. um they're they're definitely designed specifically for the the individual in the water they are very very meticulous about their designing so hence why i asked if we could speak to one of the designers that makes the equipment so let's introduce our designer 
from the Aquatic Lung Institute group. So welcome, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So um, I've actually, I've got the script here, which I'm gonna read from with the answers really to the questions. So um, Mikhail, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's been working for Aqualung Technisub, which is based in Genoa, Italy. And he's been there since 2005. So it says 15 years of working there, um, be more than that now, but that's when we got it. Uh, he studied chemical engineering and then specialized in polymer applications and technologies, which is injection molding. Isn't that immense? <laughs> so, he, so it'll be 16 years now, because we got this yeah. just a few weeks ago. So um, that is an amazing time frame to be working in this industry. Yeah, so, and it's changed a lot. This the whole industry has changed immensely in that time as well. Yeah. So my next question was, how long have you been a designer? So Mikhail said that he's not a real designer, mind you. I think I'll disagree with some of that. The CAD job. CAD. Mm, the CAD. CAD job. So what's a CAD job? <laughs> it stands for um, Computer Aided Design. Oh, excellent. I think most things are computer aided design, aren't they? <laughs> um, so it's made by a team that is lo located in Genoa. He engineers the materials and designs the aesthetical part of every project, such as colours, lens finishes and mirror effects. So again, there's a lot of goggles have got the mirror effects on them. And one of the things I like about Aquasphere that I don't know that many people know, and I don't know even if you remember Hayley, but they actually have goggles for people who have um, different eye... Um, Their vision strength. Visions, yeah. So vision straight so yeah. you can have like one lens can be a, a, a 1.0 and one lens can be a 1.5 so you, they can just pop out the lenses and individualize them and I actually thought that with person was um, absolutely amazing um so yeah so so all of those things the technologies like anti-fog and brand marketing so he's been doing that for 15 well now 16 years um, across all of the aquatic eye protection for product design. So that, yeah, that was one thing that um, Aquasphere was very um, prominent with, uh, the fact that you could have lenses that were specific to your prescription. So if you couldn't get a, a pair of goggles, which I think is now more, you can get more different variations with goggles, that do do that, but Aquasphere are amazing goggles. So, yeah. you know, you're like gonna have to pop them in and pop them out. Yeah, yeah, and change them as your vision, yeah. as your uh, prescription changes. Yeah, definitely. And I found also actually with Aquasphere with myself, that there's the sort of, the way they fitted on my socket was was excellent. I think they have, you know, a lot of different, yeah. different styles and designs. Yeah, definitely. Um, what type of pools, and this covers swimming, triathlons, Ironman and aqua aerobics equipment, does Mikhail design? So we design eye protections for every kind of swimming activity from recreational to elite competition and to the open water. Is it different kind of goggles for open water swimming? Well, I'd say it's probably different from the chemical point of view. So if you're open water, it's going to be more affected by the salts and the, and the minerals. Whereas if it's in a swimming pool, it's going to be more affected by the chlorine. I know, but I was thinking more of the shape. Oh. Because if you think about it, if, you know, scuba diving is, um, or, yeah, or snorkeling, they've yeah. got that different kind of masks. Or the um, lung one. Yeah, so... Or that they've got those ones now that have got with the snorkel coming up for yeah. people with disabilities as well. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so I just I just wondered. Um, so where our swim equipment heritage began, being born from the Aqualung group. So they they did start with the, the scuba and everything. So the original and first scuba diving company, co-founded by Jacques Cousteau, the ocean explorer would have been 110 years old today. Ooh, wow. Yeah. I remember watching Jacques Cousteau when I was obviously a very young child. <laughs> <laughs> I 
or not so young, <laughs> but uh, a much younger lady, definitely. So yeah, they, they, they've started out from the diving company, but it's interesting that they um, originated from Jacques Cousteau. Didn't know that. No, I didn't know that either. How and what brought you to this industry and the swimming pool? So the passion for water sport at the beginning, I entered as a qualified dive master. Then I started, not me personally, remember, <laughs> not me personally. Then I started to swim as I discovered from the very first day of work, our incredible goggles. They were simply as magic, comfortable and no leaks at all compared to goggles I wore growing up in Genoa. In addition, our swimming equipment, including fins, paddles, gloves, etc., are all unique to our own in-house designs with IP, which is intellectual property, being at the forefront of our development to improve swimming and water exercise for all. Yeah, we've been involved with Aquasphere for many years now, haven't we? With mm. the various things that we've been doing through our, our aquatic careers. Yeah, no, I was just about to say, like, what I find really great about Aquasphere is they do stand out as being individual pieces. Like, yeah. you know, we can we can use the, the dog bone ones, we could use the ergo bell ones, and independently, those two dumbbells, which are the same size, they can be worked in so many different ways to each other. Like, yeah. you know, the thickness in the ergo bell compared to the thickness in the dumbbell and the, the angles, so they do, they do put a lot of um, yep. practice. I mean, I I find that especially with the ergo, I'll bring up the dog bone. Hold on. Yeah, come on. Is that when you've got the ladies with the arthritic? Very nice, very becoming. I don't think this quite works the same. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's e easier to grip. So if you've got arthritic hands, you're going to find. You know, Haley's having to hold on to that one, whereas I've got that just sort of sitting on my hand. You know, she'll drop it. So it, it can it can be used for people and people with sort of shoulder problems, with arm problems, with tendon problems. These, these are excellent. Um, for the exercise, the, the bones are very good uh, for, yeah, changing planes, so changing the resistance, changing the drag. So, okay, right, brilliant. So what job did, it, <laughs> you but not you um what job did you do design before designing aquatic equipment i was chief of an r and d laboratory in polyurethane foam industry wow so even before he started with aquasphere he was working with um polyurethane foam <laughs> yeah wow so he's, yeah obviously that's uh He's learned how to manipulate that into all sorts of... Yeah, yeah. Um, and what, what qualifications was needed to be a swimming equipment designer? So I believe that engineering is a must if you want to be a designer or also a graduate in industrial design. But you must have a deep knowledge in key materials that are used in the sports industry. Here, here to that, definitely in my case, specific to the aquatic environment, and their use across all weather and temperature conditions, if you really want to have a global view on such projects. So yeah, I think, I think understanding what it's like and, and how everything perishes in the pool. I mean, again, aquasphere costumes are always the ones that have lasted the longest for me. Yeah, I'm very yeah. Mind, yeah, I'm in the pool for, about six hours a day, five to six days a week. I think one of my swimming costumes was still going and it's just beginning to show a bit of wear it was a swimming costume that I got when I very first met Aquasphere. Well, I remember, this is gonna sound terrible. I, I remember buying one of your sisters a swimming costume when she was nine and she was still wearing it when she was 30. <laughs> <laughs> she could still, <laughs> just about squeeze everything in um it was very tight but you know for the costume to, and that was all through swimming club and everything so you know you can you get your you get your money's worth out when you buy an endurance endurance set, yeah <laughs> yeah Excellent. 
Okay, so, what, so what do you look for when designing a new piece of equipment? So we look at the consumer first, what are their needs and the market opportunities. Then we study the case and we decide in parallel where to position the price point and which technologies we must use. Sometimes we have to invent something completely unique from thoughts to sketch to 3D modeling, even before we consider it viable. Wow. Like their car. <laughs> <laughs> they have to go through the drawing phase and then the model, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a bit like yeah. a car. How long does a piece of equipment take to make though? Hmm. So eye protection products can take up to two years from initial conception to consumer launch. Wow. And there are things that we probably don't even think about. Like, for example, let me grab these hand paddles. Like these hand paddles are not flat. There's a curve to them. There's a special, you know, arch aspect to the way that the hand is. They also look semi-see-through, that one does, because when yeah. you hold it up, you can see the blue shining through from that yeah. side. So, yeah. It's, so. Yeah, the design, and that design shows through as a circle, whereas. Oh, oh. So, yeah, even the design on that. And, and, and the fins, I mean, the, the design on the fins, that's just one mold. That's, that's very sci-fi. And very <laughs> light. I yeah. can literally I mean, balance it on my head. It's so light. And that's actually because from the, my days back, back, way back when, when I was a chef, you used to have to balance a knife. So you'd always know if a knife had good balance, if you could put it on your finger. But when you put that on your head, it had really good balance. So I expect that has something to do with the drag and the efficiency of how it, it works through the water. And you can see it's got like those sort of um, markings, like those almost yeah. finger or areas so yeah a lot of lot of thought must have gone into that and this one it. this one's got you know like the that would yeah, be where the water that, would glide yeah. through and, yeah yeah this one has the cut through the water at the tip and the glide through so yeah lots of thought lots and lots and lots of thought on the i'm just trying to think what else i can grab but yeah okay let's move on um mm -hmm. What key points do you consider when designing for aqua aerobics? So the human body, the fit, definitely, the function. I remember some of those questions when we were on one of their stands at, a, at an exhibition many yeah. years ago when we were talking about that. So it's the human body, the fit, the function, the scope of use, uh, i.e. body type or field of vision. So again, you've got to be able to sort of and especially the sort of ladies, a lot of the ladies that do the aqua, you know, sort of need to be supported. Shall I say that? That sounds about right, doesn't it? Need to be supported. So that needs to be taken into account. What is your favourite piece of equipment and costume? So my current favourites are the two-piece polycarbonate mirror lens goggles. We are about to take to market in line with the forthcoming Tokyo Olympic Games. Oh. So they must probably, I mean, I don't know whether that launch has actually been delayed because of the pandemic. Uh, do you know what's crazy? I saw something on the news the other day and they did say that basically, um, <laughs> though they've kind of gone back into a bit of a lockdown, they're still aiming to do it. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Mm. I think we can just, you know, leave that as a possibility yeah. yeah so um so that was the, the goggles that are coming to market for the tokyo olympics but because they stimulate the continuous development of new cutting edge design and advanced material technologies i'm going to look out for those goggles now <laughs> <laughs> i think i need to see those <laughs> okay, okay. So the next question is, do you get in the pool to try the equipment out? So absolutely yes, as I'm a member of our master swim team here in Genoa. Hey. I test our aquasphere and Phelps goggles and fitness equipment most days. Oh, so I... that, would that be Phelps goggles that um, he's actually had an input into the design 
or would it be that they he uses their atmosphere goggles when he swims? So I have um, a Michael Phelps uh, bikini type set. It's not a bikini. It's like a I'm sure he bikini. won't wear that. No, I'm sure he won't wear that. Um, and it's it's well lockdown weight. Let's just say it's a little bit tight, so I won't be wearing it myself either. Um, yeah. And I have a hand paddle that's a Phelps hand paddle, and they are very different designs. Whereas this is blue, and their equipment that they that they produce is very much um, orange and blue. The Phelps equipment is very similar to their Aquasphere gloves and it's this green kind of colour um, mm. and that I think ever, ever kind of gives an indication of it being more high, the higher end of stuff so yeah. the higher athlete or the um, power phasing but the um, Phelps goggles I've that would, that would not seen. That would actually be interesting to find out whether this is for general population but if you actually add the blue, it's the next level up. And then if it's well, what, like, what, what could you know what would indicate a level up? Would it be the fact because they do do them in the two different colours, but they're yeah. not they're the same mould, so they don't have yeah, a next level up. They uh, they haven't the only thing that they've produced that would be the next level up would be this was yeah. the um, pan paddle instead of instead of the blue gloves instead of gloves. This yeah. is like, yeah. but then this is. The most extreme and Absolutely. their belt that they've made for deep which is that green has those same air pockets and bubbles but i'm just trying to visualize it in my head to be able to explain it it's a it's it's same kind of wrap round but it's more like a pack of the back and a pack of the side it's yeah. a very much more rig, rig, rigid type of by rid, i can't say the word rigid rigid, rigid type of foaming which has a different kind of positioning on the body compared to the normal belt so mm -hmm. yeah I, do, I think you know there is a level of trying to up it but I don't think that there's the same no it was just just a thought. Yeah. yeah okay yeah, yeah yeah so how long is a piece of equipment designed to last for so yeah I agree with this I think everyone all of us could it depends on the user yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fitness swimmers can keep the mask or goggles up to two or three years same goes for training accessories, if not longer, absolutely. Whilst competition swimmers and triathletes often change goggles three times a year and have different lens models for training competitions, indoors and outdoor activity. So where is the focus for him, so this is Mikhail, and Aquasphere for equipment in the future? We'll expand our offer to cover all swimmers types for any swimming condition and for any purpose. Our goal is to ensure everyone has an enjoyable experience with the aquatic equipment. I wanted to ask about the virus with COVID being um, impacting. And one of the questions I asked was, would this have an impact on equipment? Would they have anything that they would change or do to help with the whole COVID situation? Mm -hmm. His reply was... Not really, since in the water, the coronavirus is significantly diluted and the goggles and masks are classed as PPE. So personal protective equipment. I think we all know what PPE is nowadays. We have actually had a huge uplift of demand from frontline workers opting for our swim masks over their traditional, often poor quality issued health and safety glasses. Wait, 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 hold on. That's interesting. <laughs> so I don't mean to laugh, but do you mean that there's a nurse turning up wearing goggles? <laughs> I don't think those guys are thinking more of the snorkel masks, the big old masks. I have seen some very strange goggles actually on sort of some telly programs and, and things. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think that I mean the actual swimming goggles, but maybe the snorkel masks. There are some which are, are that the complete face ones, aren't there? So yeah, but that's that. when they're more on the front line, front line. 
So I'm, I wonder like whether that, because it, yeah, well, no, I mean, yeah. as in, you know, these are frontline workers, but we've got, we've got frontline workers who go to, you know, the chronic, chronically ill or the problems yeah. that, that they're facing. <laughs> okay, so when I, so when I mean frontline workers, front, I mean, as in the ones in the hospital, yeah. on the critical care units, on the very, very front line. Uh, but we also have those on the front line, like, my sister, the paramedic, you know, she's on yeah. the front line. But if I had, I if, I had if I had her turn up at, to say or to do a first aid situation and she turned up with some goggles on, <laughs> we'd come out to have a giggle. So that's why that's what I was having a giggle about with the frontline workers wearing goggles. But yeah. No, yeah. I, I thought it would have been more the, the sort of full of masks. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. No, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's, very, it's, it's, it's um, you know, because they are made of such good quality products and they are designed to last and they are designed to be airtight, then I think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get that. I get so, that. Yeah. I just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. There is talk about asking slash insisting, kind of asking, insisting from uh, for participants to bring their own equipment because for some leisure centres, we're not allowed to use noodles or any piece of equipment. And then in other leisure centres, we are allowed to use equipment and then it gets um, submerged under the water for a period of time. But if we could advise our participants to bring their own equipment, what do you think that idea would be like from their point of view? Coming so uh, Mikhail agrees and says, again, that makes sense. I think it makes sense to all of us, really. Just like seeing the growth of people taking their own yoga mats. You know, there was that time when everyone was saying how so it was very unhygienic to use other yoga mats. And now they get sort of disinfected and everything, but they're people are encouraged to take their own. So there's definitely a lot more of that happened over the past five years. Um, so I think definitely the idea of people bringing their own kit, and also it's not heavy, is it? So, you know, this is not him talking, this is me talking. The equipment is not heavy, you know, this um, is not heavy. I don't know if I can balance it on a finger or whatever, but it I mean, really the only, is. The only thing that's heavy, I think, is the more denser phone. Like this is heavier. Yeah. yeah. This is heavier than the other than the um, ergo bell, but it's still not heavy. It's no. still not not bad. So you know, if you could put that in your swimming bag along with your costume and your towel and your shower and stuff, it's I th I personally think it's a really good idea. But back to his answer. So as he said, most of the aquatic equipment is affordable because yeah, it's going to last for donkey's years. So yes, it might cost you sort of in the UK twenty thirty pounds. But if it's going to last you 10, 15 years, then that's that's money well spent. Mm. Um, also, you've always got the equipment and it's not going sort of like horrible, like, yeah. you know, noodles when they get older are just worse. Well, um, um, Aquasphere do do noodles, but yeah. noodles are all over the place as well. But, yeah. you know, um, it, it's not it's not unfamiliar to see um some a parent with a toddler walk in with a noodle absolutely yeah it's, absolutely. that's and and we also can see some people go and use the public pool time and take a noodle for themselves then so Listen, yeah it's, it's the same with the gloves isn't it Haley? pick up the mitts again the blue ones <laughs> they're under here <laughs> under okay. all the other pile of atmosphere stuff it was the first thing that you took out <laughs> so you know if if people had their own pair of mitts you take home your swimming costume and you wash it, you know, in, in cold, you can just submerge those into some, into a, a bucket or a, into the sink of cold water, then hang them out to dry. Much more hygienic to do that than to actually have them through the centre as well. Yeah. So, uh, what know, I suddenly noticed was the fact that the picture is actually a swimmer. Yeah. Yeah, no, they they, you know, they are swim. used for swimming as well, and it would be quite good if we could do a similar kind of image, but for an aqua participant. But yeah, yeah. The, the the gloves, the equipment is great, and I mean the bag, the bag that I've got itself, you know, it's a big aquatic 
mesh bag so when it gets yeah. all wet it's able to drain out so where yeah. can we find their equipment we can go to www.aquaspherswims.com and michaelphelps.com that's aquaspherswim.com and michaelphelps.com they're also on social media as well so you can find them on facebook and instagram but we recommend their kit. It is a great set of equipment to have in your toolbox, in your bag, in your own kit, as well as in the classes. And um, my 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 um, aging population love the um, dog bone and the ergo bell bells um, because, like you're saying, the hand grip isn't so intense. The actual size of the foam isn't intense, um, and it's just long lasting. It's been great. They've been there for years yeah no i love this stuff so well thank you for being my buddy here linda and um I, you're welcome <laughs> and, and i look forward to seeing your next interview excellent yeah so do i <laughs> all right take care bye, bye.